So beside transmitter testing, the receiver testing is also a critical piece to ensure product interoperability. And on the receiver side, what we like to do is to stress the receiver with a stress signal um, and see if the receiver can tolerate those stresses. So, you know, in the real environment, the products out there is not perfect and they have impairments and we want to know if the receiver uh, is able to tolerate those uh, impairments. Basically, there are four different uh, frequencies that you need to stress your receiver. So those stresses are sinusoidal jitter, coupled with random jitter, the ISI, and so on. But basically, your product has to pass the four compliance points where the SJ, the sinusoidal jitter, is at 5 megahertz, 10 megahertz, 33 megahertz, and 62 megahertz. So if you pass uh, these four test points, or you know, your products will be considered uh, a pass in the, uh, for the SATA I.O. specifications. However, uh, it is also important for you to characterize the whole spectrum of that SJ. And the reason is they may be whole uh, in the SJ uh, spectrum that the four compliance point uh, may not cover. And you will be able to do that with the Agilent uh, Beat Error Rate Tester solution, the Jaybird that can quickly characterize that jitter tolerance curve uh, for you. So when I talk about characterizing the whole uh, jitter spectrum, so I am referring to the jitter uh, tolerance curve. So you want to see the jitter tolerance curve of your entire spectrum. So when you are testing your receiver, the pattern that you need is the uh, frame com pattern. However, for the calibration, you will be calibrating it with the lone bit pattern. The frame comp pattern is actually more complicated. Uh, it's a frame packet. Basically, you have the data that is frame up, uh, which include the header, the payload, the CRC packet, as well as the, the end of the packet frame at the end of the, uh, the, the pattern. So we will be able to check if the CRC is correct when the receiver retransmit uh, the pattern to the bit error rate tester. However, for calibration, for simplicity, the logo group has decided to use the uh, lone bit pattern uh, for the calibration uh, instead of using the frame comp pattern, uh, which is too long um, and, could take, uh, and, and could induce uh, too much uncertainty in that calibration. Of course, when you are testing the receiver, when you're doing the receiver testing, uh, you are not doing um, bit error rate uh, comparison. Instead, you are doing the uh, frame error rate counting because there is um, because the products are allowed to insert uh, lines uh, in in the bit stream uh, when the speed uh, of the host and the speed of the drive uh, is different, or the speed of the stimulus and the speed of the clock speed of so uh, yeah, so the, the products are allowed to uh, insert a lines or remove a lines uh, from the bit stream when the clock driving the pattern generator and the product uh, is different. So if the speed is much faster uh, on the stimulus side, um, the product can remove a lines in order to match the speed of that uh, stimulus. So the SATA requires the testing using the frame error rate and, you, and the frame error rate would take the uh, bit sequence, uh, remove the alliance and compute the CRC uh, of the packet and compare to the CRC packet that is transmitted by the stimulus and check if they are the same or not. So if they are the same, it means that there is no error in the packet and if there's an error, it means that something, uh, some error has been introduced by the receiver, which, uh, which, would mean, which would mean a fail, a failure to the test. Through the years, uh, one of the components that many uh, product developer has overlooked is the SSC performance of the uh, product. So the SSC here is the uh, spread uh, spectrum clocking. 
um, in the status specifications, it defined that your SSC has to look like a triangular waveform, and that would be meeting the SATA requirement. However, there are more and more lower cost uh, SSC generators that would not generate good triangular profile SSC. Instead, it may generate very uh, noisy SSC or sometimes even a sine wave SSC, uh, which could be too stressful for the receiver. So what, um, I was, um, so, uh, what, what you need to do to characterize a receiver uh, with those available SSC in the market is to stress your product with those uh, SSC profile. And um, Agilent has a unique solution in the uh, Jaybird um, that allows you to uh, simulate arbitrary SSC pattern, uh, SSC profile into the bitstream. So if you if you so if you see um, a very stressful SSC profile uh, from a product in the market, you can save the SSC profile and uh, put that into the Jaybird, and the Jaybird can generate those profile easily and 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 try to stress your receiver. So in that way, uh, you can. Um, you can, you, you can uh, stress a receiver more properly with real-life uh, real uh, products, uh, the SSC pro profile of the products.